Hi everyone, this is Dimitri from Golden Ticket. Welcome to another trading session. In today's video, I will cover trend lines and just basically charting out stocks and entry points, things like that. We're not gonna go too deep into the topic just yet. I just want to give, you know, a basic rundown and explain how these things work. So this way you are able to do it on your own and you have a general idea of how it works. Now in the future dooms, yes, we will be going more into depth. However, for today, we will make a brief. We did go over it before, but not in a lot of detail. So today I want to go into more detail, but it's still going to be just covering basics. So let's get started. So I already pulled up uh, stockcharts.com. Now, if I want to, you know, first demonstrate a downwards trend, then I want to demonstrate an upwards trend. And, you know, we're going to do some sideways, you know, double downs and all this. Uh, if you really want to be successful when it comes to drawing trend lines and so on and so forth, the main thing you need to know is how to identify chart patterns. For example, just looking at this chart right now, I can identify one chart pattern. And, you know, I call it personally the double down. Some people, you know, they call it by different names. But when in a period of time, the stock hits two points where it's roughly the same exact you know, uh, area of um, support. So let's go let's turn on annotation. Okay, so we have this area of support right here. Now it broke support over here for a second, but it's not really a big deal. And now you want to keep in mind when you do your charting, um, you want to have a few things in mind. So when you're drawing trend lines, you have to think what makes a trend, which is one. Then you have to identify the trend, which is two. And then you have to keep in mind the patterns. So we have, you know, bullish flags, uh, you know, bearish flags, uh, pedants. We have channels, which we have also discussed in previous YouTube videos. So if you are interested in what channels are, I will give you, you know, that opportunity to catch up on it today by giving you a brief example. It's, you know, I'm not gonna go into detail. I'm just gonna go over it, you know, skim over it, that's it. Now, when you are identifying trend lines for a stock, or any security. I mean, it doesn't have to be a stock. It could be a mutual fund, like an ETF, whatever it is. You could even do it with gold. So the key thing that you always need to know is one, what is the prevailing direction? So, you know, you want to identify if it's going up, if it's going down. So this way you could chart it out properly. And two, the thing that you want to look for, it is always said that when you are doing lines or trend lines, for that matter, you want to see at least two bounces or two points. However, three is the you know preferred number. Why? It's because we put less weight on two bounces we put more weight on three. And that brings us to the very example that we have put up on our screen where I just drew a line. So right here, we have the first bounce, second bounce, third bounce, and then it starts moving upwards. So, you know, if we did the two bounce method, then right here, we could have brought, bought in, however, we would have suffered time decay if this was options. And chances are we probably would have worried, we would have had panic, we would have had time decay affect us, and so on and so forth. So you always want to see that third bounce, which is one of the reasons why I am not 
the biggest fan of that, you know, double down, double dip, whatever you want to call it. Obviously, this could go upside down where this would be here, this would be there, this would be there. And that's the head and shoulders. So depending on what chart pattern you are looking at, it could be either bullish or bearish. However, we want to learn how to, you know, map out these trend lines, how to map out these lines, um, identify support, identify resistance without having to memorize 300 different patterns. Because personally, I know that that wasted big amount of time on having to sit there and, you know, study all of these patterns. We want to just be able to look at the chart and identify the trend. So as you can see here on the first line that I drew right at the beginning, we set the support right here at that first dip. Then we had the second touch right here and it kind of broke that um, support, but it wasn't really a big break. Uh, it was 50, uh, 546.98. Over here, we have 539.49. However, you have to take into account the time. So we wanted to stay on this line. We don't want it to go any further. And then after that third bounce is when it began to go up. So that is, you know, the very, very basic. So we're going to take a look at a couple of examples. So today we're going to look at, let's see. No, I don't want to save changes. Let's take a look at my one of my favorite stocks, AVIR. Now, this stock was all the way up here, $94. And then, you know, it went down, took a bump up, and then just flew down. So... When it comes to identifying trend lines, and I know that first we're starting with, you know, the downfall. However, if it doesn't matter if it's a downfall, it doesn't matter if it's the up. However, you know, there are two schools of thought. There are some people who like to identify trends by the wick. If we look right here, we can see that there's a little line going above the candle. That's called the wick. So there are certain people who will draw their trend lines using the wicks. If you were to ask me if that is a good way, I would always tell you no. The best way to draw a trend line is using the candle itself. So if, you know, it stops right here. So uh, let's annotate this so I can show you guys. So, you know, right here, um, if it stops right here, that's it. We're not counting the wick. There are some people that will count the wick. However, not, we're not going to be one of those people. Why? Because... I have seen stocks that hit that wick and, you know, instantly it's gone. Wicks are usually milliseconds long. So unless you have, you know, a take profit set, then you are probably not going to catch it. And even if you do have a take profit set, you're still not going to catch most of it because say you're selling 500 shares, it's at that high point for all of one second. Maybe you'll get to fill a sell order of 20 shares out of those 500. So never, I, you know, my opinion, never use the wicks. It's just not a good idea. So for, uh, you know, a chart like this, we want to start a trend line of, you know, identifying a negative trend. Now here, obviously, this is no surprise. We're not even going to bother on, you know, identifying this trend. 
because it's just a steep downfall. Now, what we will do with this chart is we're going to set a support. So to, in order for you to set a support, it's similar to the Fibonacci retracement, which I will once again go over. And you want to go from the lowest point. So our lowest point, if we take a look, is right about here. And we want to draw a line that doesn't take account for the wicks. So right there. Now, this is our, you know, um, some people will call it a secondary, some people will call it a first or primary support. I'm going to call it, you know, the primary. If it falls below this line, if your stock does, then you have a serious problem on your hands. However, as the stock grows, so does it support. Every time it breaks a new high, it develops a new support, which if you do technical analysis, even with the bots that we have available on our Discord free of charge, you will see the bots always give you two supports and two resistance. So with this being the first support, we are covering an area of up to here because that's the last time it touched it. And if you notice, I took it from this low point and just drew it. However, with this dip, it hit that same exact line. So with this being the first support, what is the second one? So we're going to look at what's the lowest point, and that's just right around here. So I'm going to take a line. We're going to draw it. It's a little off, but there you go. Now, as you can see over here, it hit that low point, went up here again, right there, that white little uh, candle. It hit that support again. And right now, guess where we are? We're at the support again. So that is how you essentially draw out support lines and how you identify trends. Now, this is a very complicated chart to map out because you usually don't see drops like this, which is why we're going to, you know, move on to other stocks. And, you know, by the end of this Zoom, what I want you guys to understand is how to use these things. Now, uh, the things that you need in order to get started are very simple. It's just uh, um, the MACD and RSI, and of course the volume, which right here is on the bottom of the chart. So we did AVIR. We got the you know the gist of things going. So now let's play something a little bit different. Let's go to Tesla. Okay, so we have a Tesla chart pulled up. First thing I want to do, you know, if I'm in a position where I am trying to identify a trend or, um, you know, I'm trying to see what is happening, let's do the support. Now, because this is not a one minute chart, this is not a 15 minute chart, but this is, you know, long term charts, which come very handy when you are talking about swing plays, options that you want to hold for longer than a week so on and so forth. You know, we have our 200 EMA, which is the red line right here. And we have our 50 EMA, which is the blue line. And I'm sure you guys have heard several times on our Discord, which by the way, if you are not a part of, there's a link below in the description as well as on our YouTube um, page itself, like our channel page. So if it's bouncing off the 50 EMA, that's a good thing. How do we know? Because look right here, it bounced off of the 50 and the 200 and just went right up. So uh, let's take our lowest level right here and let's draw our little line. So now we have an established support and that is the first support. Now, with that first support being drawn you know, sometimes you're just not happy because you should not have one support. 
So I'm going to establish a secondary support. Now, there are also two ways of establishing a secondary support. Some people, they will use the, you know, I use the lowest point. And for secondary, they would use a second lowest point, which would be right around here. And if we were to draw it, you would see that this right here, the wick touches secondary support. And right over here, you know, it kind of dipped a little below it. However, it did not touch our primary support. So those are some ways that you could draw your support lines. Like I said, today is gonna to be essential basics. Now, let's switch on to resistance. Resistance would be, if we wanted to start from here, we could go straight like that and we could see that TSOA is having a hard time breaking this resistance level. As time passes, all stocks are going to go up unless the company is going bankrupt then all stocks are going up with time. So with the support, you start at the lowest point. Resistance, you start at the high point from the day that you are charting it out. Now, when it comes to also identifying trend lines, the same thing applies, just a little bit different. So I see that right here is an uptrend. We could say, okay, the trend started here. Now, we don't want to go by the wick which is, like I said, that little line that comes after your candle. So this was the low point. And now I'm going to trace it up to about here. That's where I see this trend right here ending. Now, this trend, by the way, was from, uh, what is this, around 470, 480, and it ends at around 625, high was 695, and then it drops. Next trend that I'm going to identify is going to start here. And again, I don't want to touch the candles. I just want to move up. So we're going up just to around here. Now we cross some candles, you know, because this was a really steep rise. However, that's the way that um, trends and patterns, you know, sometimes when they're flying up like that works. Uh, same thing for the downtrend. We go from the lowest point, which would be, I'm not gonna count this. I'm gonna go from here and I'm gonna move it down to about here. So I see how the downtrend's here, then it moves up. And the persistence is going to here. So if I see this little, you know, peak, I'm not going to go ahead and say, okay, the downtrend's over. Instead, I'm going to realize that this is just continuing because I don't see it. So what essentially you want to be looking for is higher highs, higher lows, lower lows, and uh, lower highs. And a good way to determine that is with one of my favorite stocks. Again, A, if this is not a beautiful site for sore eyes, I literally do not know what is. We could identify our uptrend by just simply, let's uh, turn on annotations. By clicking here, that was the low point. And we do not have another one till there. So this was the dip. After this dip, we could continue it going to here. And then this is when it really started to take off. So we're going to start from here and move there. So let's rewind this about the time that I called it on the Discord, which was about two, three weeks ago. So this line would disappear. 
I called it about here. And since then, it has done nothing but gone up. Now, if we wanted to identify a downtrend, say we were here, and we saw that two days in a row, you know, it's, it was going green. I would say, okay, so it went from here, going all the way here because I don't, you know, do the wick school of thought. So you could see right here and you can identify the trend. Now, of course, with identifying trends, you always, like I said, have to have your 200 EMA, a 50 EMA. Why? Because the 50 and the 200 are primary for identifying proper trends. Now, if you want to do day trading, then you use a 10 and the 40. So that's going to be, you know, how to identify trend lines. Now let's go into more of, you know, setting support, setting resistance. So we don't want this on a daily. Let's do it on a one minute chart. Except we don't want A, we want A, B, I, R. Okay, so we have a one minute chart right here. Now clearly this is, a mess. So I am going to open our Weibo account. Let's pull up AVIR. So how do we identify support and resistance on here? We're going to obviously you know, pull up our drawings line. Now, the lowest point that we, have, we saw from this time, pretty much this time, is right there. And as you could see, the wick here hit the same low point where this bar hit. Now, our high point, if we wanted to be really, really, you know, technical with it, would be somewhere around here. Uh, let me get rid of some of these indicators because they are getting in the way. Okay, so we have our low point, which we could see. Um, it hit right there. And this one pretty much almost hit right there. So we're gonna set a couple of resistance. So this would be our initial support. And our initial resistance would be somewhere around here. Wait, hold on, my drawing tools are not there, there you go. Okay, so this would be our main resistance. Except it went a little too far. So um, there we go, let's start it here. And we want to drag it out. So we see that the stock does not break resistance. And essentially, the reason why you want to keep that resistance line is because that's going to be your take profit. Now, while the stock does not break our resistance so far, it does break or almost breaks our support. With, the, with that wick right here. And this is on a one minute chart. So if we were to switch out from our one minute chart and we were to go to a daily chart, it would be a whole different story. So now we have a resistance of at about 32 or $33 and 65 cents. We have a support of a re, you know, recent support of, let's take a look at that. We have a recent support of $27 and 89 roughly. So essentially what that tells me is right now, 
this right here, it hit that support, you know, that wick did. So I'm expecting that this is entering the level of support and it's supposed to go back up. And let's verify that through what I mentioned earlier, the channels. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add channels to our uh, chart. I'm gonna do count new channels. We could do, uh, well, I don't know why we're in MA. Uh, we could do one, which is usual on uh, Weeble, which by the way, Weeble, I highly recommend. Do not, I don't wanna say do not use it, but their count new channel settings are really, really bad. You should be able to set your channels to, usually the default is 1.5. I usually set it to 2.25. However, on Weeble, it does not allow you to do decimal points. So we're gonna set it to two. Now we can see that this is our lower channel, this is our mid, and this is our upper channel. Now this just broke below the middle channel, meaning that if it does not break this support, then our automatic secondary support is going to be the lower channel. So on um, Tuesday, because Monday is a holiday at open, if ABIR is down in the morning, you wanna watch, is it gonna bounce off of $27.92? If it does, then we wanna see how low is it gonna go, however, Based on this support, and this is spanning a couple of days, it should bounce off of here and make a run again at the upper resistance. So that's how you, you know, plot out support, plot out resistance. And once again, on here, I will show you guys real quick how to plot out trends. Over here, we have, you know, pretty much our uptrend beginning. So you take that and you don't use the wicks, you go along. So we would stop right around here, which is where this uptick really happened. But this right here should be enough to let you know that the ticker is, or the symbol, the security, however you want to play, however you want to say it, that it's in a bullish pattern. Because we can't do that here. Here, I could tell you that this symbol, um, at this exact moment, is in a sideways pattern. But I certainly can't, you know, go ahead and say, okay, it's bullish. Uh, if we look over here, obviously we'll say that it's in a bearish pattern. Same here. So keeping that in mind, when you look at a stock, so for instance, let's say that Monday we want to go and play Amazon again, or Tuesday, I'm sorry. This is a daily chart. I'm going to see that from here to here, it was bullish, but now I see this red candle. That's telling me that something is wrong. That I look at my channels, I see that it broke the upper channel and chances are it's due for a correction. With it being due for a correction, am I gonna open a call on it before looking at how the day opens? No. When you see a downtrend like this, you could, you know, chart it out and then see what channel it's hitting. And then you have, a, you know, this idea like over here, you would have seen, okay, it's bouncing up. Why? Because I see this huge candle. I see this little candle and then I see this tiny candle, which means that they went sideways and then boom, upswing. And it just keeps repeating itself. It keeps repeating itself. This one, it went bearish and then boom. So that means if you got it here, you could have profited off of AMZN for 
you know, eight days in a row, six days in a row, whatever it is. Now, this is for long-term planning when it comes to short-term planning. If we were to go to a one-minute chart, it's a lot easier. I could tell that this right here is going sideways because it's sticking on the middle channel. If I wanted to go into the day, just draw your lines and then you're able to get your support and resistance. So, you know, I want to plot this at that time of day as my resistance. When is it going to hit it again? And right there is when it breaks its resistance. However, what is the most important thing is the support because that will tell you, you know, like when should you sell? When is it time to get out? So you want to look for the low point, which would be here if we were playing at this time. That would be your primary. But the main, uh, the secondary support would be here. You could either set here as your secondary support if you really want to be cautious, which it never did hit. If you really, really, really want to take a risk, you could go for the low of the day. So that would be just around there. Now, obviously, I play a little bit more risky than most people. However, that's how I map it out. Uh, today, I sold... I told you guys when to sell Amazon at this exact point. And why did I do that? Because I'm not mapping out support and resistance anymore. I'm looking at the channels. I saw it broke through. I saw this one red candle. That was enough for me to know to get out. So that's how you, you know, just, you know, the basics for now, at least. How you, you know, plan out uh, trend lines or how you chart out trend lines, how you pick up support and, you know, how you see the resistance and so on and so forth. So make sure you use those channels. And with that, just map out your support, map out your resistance and from there, you have a better idea of where to set your stop losses. Don't set it at that first support level. Always set it to the second support level at least if you're, gonna, if you're using stop losses, which you should if you are a new trader and you're trading alone. Um, once a stock breaks resistance, then you know that it is on a bullish trend, especially if it keeps breaking resistance. So that is going to be our lesson for today. Once again, this is Dimitri from Golden Ticket. If you are not on our Discord, the link is below, as well as in our YouTube profile. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on alerts so you can get our future videos. And I will see you guys on Discord. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Before you go, here are three free ways that we can help you become a more profitable trader. You can join our Discord channel. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest videos and like this video. Thanks, everybody, for watching. More videos to come. We usually do them once a week, and I will see you later.